Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Journey Across the Galaxy. Today's topic will be a discussion of the new feature that is supposed to be coming out th sometime this year. But before we do that, let me bring new viewers up to speed. We are continuing on our way towards Beagle Point, having left the bubble far behind, crossing through the center of the galaxy, and uh, continuing on our way towards where Beagle Point is, somewhere out over in this direction. I'm actually kind of curious to see if we can... Um, if we're close enough to actually get a, uh, let's see here, Beagle Point. No, nope, still 30,000 light years away, so we got a little bit of a ways to go. Let's go ahead and get off the ground. I'll bring the new players up to speed on what it is that we're doing, or the new players, the new, the new viewers up to speed on what it is that we do in these episodes, and then we'll get in our, into our discussion about the new feature. <laughs> uh, so, our primary goal for this series is working on our exobiology and basically we just try to stop as many times as we can trying to find biological signatures as we go we're also looking for high value planets to scan such as water worlds ammonia worlds and uh earth-like worlds so uh you know we're also trying to find those as we go generally i'm trying to uh explain all of this as we're jumping into the next system but unfortunately this particular uh system has this particular body ha is in the way of our next jump scan or <laughs> in the way of our next destination and our next uh jump so ah there we go so i'm having a little bit of a hard time uh mumbling until we get on, the, on our way to the next thing. So now that we're charging, what we typically do is, is we'll hop into the next system, press the, uh, or check out the system map to see if anybody's actually explored anything. And then we'll use our full spectrum system scanner to see if there are any high value planets, as well as any biological signatures on any of the planets. We're looking for at least two biological signatures to justify spending the time to go and check them out. Uh, single biological signature is only gonna put us in a situation where we're gonna find bacteria 99% of the time. So let us hop into the system here. We'll pop the discovery scanner, because we always, you always have to do that regardless of whether you're exploring or not. It just makes sense to do it. Check out the system map. A lot of times I forget to check the system map, because it's, you know, most of the time nobody's seen any of this stuff. We'll get out of the star's influence right here. Pop down into the full spectrum system scanner. Check to see if there are any Earth-like worlds, ammonia worlds, or water worlds. There are none, but since there are few enough bodies here to justify doing a full-on scan, we'll go ahead and do that now. Looking for biological signatures up there in the top right where it says features, that is it. So now that we're caught up with the process for all of this stuff, I know that those of you who have been watching this stuff probably get tired of hearing me say that over and over again, but you have to remember that I, prop I most of my viewers are new viewers and they don't know what's going on. So I have to kind of go through the process. Anyways, you guys came here because of the title said uh, we were gonna be talking about the new feature that is supposed to be coming to Elite Dangerous sometime this year. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of speculation on the internet about what that new feature might be. Anybody who says that they have a good idea of what it is uh, does not. <laughs> as they have, as far, at least as far as I know, they haven't released any official information about what this feature is supposed to be. Um, there are some interesting theories as to what it could end up being based off of different forum posts that people have seen on the internet. Uh, and also just things that the developers have said in the past. I personally can't attest to whether any of that is reasonable or not because I don't really follow the forums. I don't really follow the development process. So anything I say here is just like everybody else, pure conjecture. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't anything interesting in that system. Uh, so all I can do is just kind of repeat some of the things that I've heard from other content creators on the internet as they talk about the, ver the various things, the various features. So as far as a brand new feature goes, obviously I think the thing that many of us in the community would love to see would be ship interiors. Um, but unfortunately, the if you're realistic about what your expectations are when it comes to how they do development in this game, that's not reason. That's not really a. That's not really something we should truly be hoping for. I mean, you should. You should be hoping for it, but expecting. You shouldn't really be expecting that to be the feature that comes out. Obviously, as somebody who loves being in my ship and somebody who is really hoping that Odyssey was going to be the next, the, the first step in, you know, EVA-related activities and also being able to walk around the ships that we fly, that we've been flying for many years. 
that would be my number one priority as far as a new feature. But um, the amount of work that's going to go that would have to go into providing full on interiors for each of the ships would be quite a lot. And I believe based off of what I've seen other content creators say about the develop, uh, FDev's financials, like the company's financials and just their path in general, I don't see ship interiors being what they announce once they get around to actually telling us what the feature is going to be. Now, don't take that to mean that I don't want it to be. That is absolutely the number one thing I would like them to work on. But I just I, I try to be realistic about things and based on the amount of work that it would take to get that done, I just I don't see it happening. Uh, you know, I, I could be wrong. I, I, I would love to be wrong. I mean, I want to be wrong. Uh, I'm not scanning anything here because there's no, there, there's too many bodies. I want to be wrong. Let me make it very clear. I want to be wrong. I want ship interiors to be the new feature that they come out with. But I just, based on their history and some arguments that have been made on, uh, some arguments that have been made about it in over the years and also recently, I just, I don't see it happening. I really wish that it would, but I just don't see it happening. Now, one of the developers before he was let go did mention that whatever he was working on before he left was the coolest thing, or one of one of the coolest things that he had ever, he has ever seen in the game. So I could see perhaps uh, maybe some kind of EVA-related activity. Um, if they came out with space stations and, uh, you know, maybe some derelict ships or something like that, that they could copy paste over the bubble or, or even in, even out in deep space, um, you know, I could see that being a thing because that wouldn't necessarily take too much to get done and they would be able to uh, get a lot of bang for their buck by designing a few different things that you would interact with and then, you know, doing like they did with the, 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 the ground bases that they did for Odyssey and basically just, you know, randomly generating them for missions and things like that. I could see them doing something like that. Uh, it would be an addition, it would be an expansion of the Odyssey functionality. It would be in line with, you know, what we were all kind of hoping Odyssey would end up progressing towards. And, you know, that would be something that is really cool. Um, so as much as I would love to see, uh, as much as I would love to see ship interiors, if we're going to see any kind of new interiors in space, I would imagine it's probably going to be uh, related to, you know, something Odyssey related. You know, a, a, something really cool could be something EVA related, I think. Now, that being said, I have heard other people talking about uh, base construction as another potential option. Uh, ooh, there we go. This is what we're looking for. Okay, so uh, let's get out of here. Get ourselves locked onto that. It's kind of far away, but beggars can't be choosers. Um, base construction, I think, would be um, more difficult to do than figuring out EVA, because obviously that's just that's just a. You, we, they already have character models, so that's not hard. And then all they would have to do would be to figure out a way a way to take your character out of the ship. They already know how to do that because you're able to walk around on the ground and then just make your character able to move through 3D space. They already know how to do that because you're able to jump around on planet surfaces and use your jetpack to go up and down and move around and all that stuff. So I can't imagine that creating EVA from this point would be that difficult outside of they just need to be able to make it so that you're able to exit your ship out here in the super cruise area. So. I can't imagine that would be that difficult to do. Creating, you know, a limited number of assets to allow you to go into a ship or a derelict base or whatever wouldn't really be that big of a deal. And, you know, I, I see that being more likely from a resource creation standpoint because it's, it would be easier to do than coming out with a full on base creation system because now you have to set it up so that people can claim spaces on a planet or a body or whatever it is and then make it so that they can actually start building a base that sounds at least to me it sounds like a lot more work than just coming out with some kind of eva related uh update to odyssey so in my personal opinion i i i can see how base construction would be an option because the developers have kind of hinted at it over the years from what i understand 
but I would think that it would be much easier given that they already have the mechanics in place for you being able to kind of float around in space based off, the, off of how the character model already works. I would imagine that it would probably be something EVA related. That would be a lot more fun than base creation for most people because, you know, who wants to sit around messing, how many people really want to sit around building up a base? Like not too many of us got into this space game thinking, oh, let me go build a base on a planet. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, that's my two cents on the whole new feature thing. I don't anticipate it being ship interiors. That would take that would take even more work than the base creation, not because it's harder to implement, but just because the amount of work they would have to put into creating the interiors of the ship, like actually sitting down and designing and modeling and then making it so that you could actually walk around your ship. That sounds like a lot more work than maybe base creation where they could just take assets that they already have, repurpose them so that you can build your own base and then put it down somewhere. And then that would be harder than even making it so that, you know, you could EVA around your ship, leave your ship, go into, you know, maybe an abandoned space station or a derelict ship or whatever they whatever assets they decide to create they come out with 10 15 20 different assets that they can just design and then they just randomly sprinkle them out through space and then you know that makes the most sense to me you know with the way that my brain works and how i interpret the logic of it it just it seems to me like that would be the easiest thing to do that would give them the biggest bang for their buck uh you know without having without having to expend a lot of resources so i don't know that's my thought process on the whole new feature thing um, obviously, I don't. None of us knows enough to really have a good idea of what it's going to be. So we just kind of have to wait for them to uh, tell us what it's going to be. Hopefully, my logic makes some sense. I'm sure some of you will disagree because you, you know, maybe you have a different idea of what you think is going on. That's totally fine. Uh, we all have we all have our thought processes, and we see things one way or another. And you're free to, you know have your own opinion on it so let's get it let's get down we have some fonticula here trying to uh, as we continue to try to level up our biology fonticula isn't exactly the most exciting thing anymore because we found so much of it and it's fairly common but it's going to be more money in the bank when we go to uh, drop off all of our data once we get to beagle point uh part of me is still wondering if once we get to beagle point if i should just do a straight up uh grind back to the bubble partly because it would be nice if i didn't have to fight um, landing all the time so i might you know it might be interesting to maybe just do a really long live stream and just grind all the way back <laughs> just go all the way back in like one sitting that would take very that would take many many hours to do but uh you know i don't know at the same time, we do need, uh, we do need, what, seven, probably seven billion credits to be comfortable with buying a fleet carrier, outfitting it, and then still having enough money left over to, you know, be comfortable with that. So it probably makes more sense for us to maybe go to Colonia after this, make, maybe make a detour to Colonia, and then, um, you know, that would make it so that we can, uh, well, Fonticula is usually not just inside the craters so let's i don't know the bacteria is gonna be hard to spot here well i see something down here and the fonticula here looks really like tan what color is this this is a different fonticula i don't think we i don't recall having seen these But this is what I'm talking about. I wish I, I kind of wish I had a smaller ship because it would be so much easier to land and not have to like hunt around for landing spots. Because look at this, I should be able to land here based off of what the terrain thingy is telling me. But for whatever reason, I can't. Let me try a different orientation and see if maybe that'll give me the the blue light. Oh, come on. Oh, nope, I saw some blue there for a second. It was like there for half a second. Not even half a second. Where was it? This is what I'm this is what frustrates me about flying this ship is it's just it's so finicky about where you can land. Like why can I why can I land where that little blue where that little blue part's popping up? 
I can't land on the mushrooms because they're too big and, like, sturdy. I saw another blue part pop up, but it's just... This is so ridiculous. There we go. All right. So we'll go get this one scanned. I'm kind of curious to know what this one is because uh, I don't think I don't recall having seen this color before. It looks very strange. Well, let's find a big one so we can so we can get a really good look. I was going to go with the small one because it was very close, but have we seen this one before? Color looks weird. Is this like gold? Pretty sure we found gold before. Yellow, okay. Fontic Fonticula campestris yellow. I don't know that we found yellow before. I'm pretty sure we found gold, but I don't think we found actually found yellow, which is weird. You would think that, you know, gold would be a little bit harder to find. <clears throat> but uh, I don't recall having seen an actual yellow one yet. So let's fly around and see if we can find another patch. Preferably in a more flat area so we don't have to f hunt around. Trying to find a place to land. Let's try over here. That's why I run with a shield. Here we go. Nope, 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 nope. Right there. Nope, nope, come on. There we go. Okay, we'll get number two. I haven't seen any other bacteria-looking stuff yet, but there's always a possibility. So uh, we're already at the 17-minute mark. We're going to go ahead and end it on this planet, but uh, we're going to go and look and see if maybe we can find some of the bacteria here to make it extra worth our while to have stopped. Because uh, this is a weekend, a quote unquote weekend episode for me. I try to do two extra episodes at the end of my week so that I have something publishing every day. And I'm not necessarily concerned with making these super full length videos when I'm just trying to, when they're just kind of placeholders. I mean, I know, I know you guys don't care about that, but, um, you know. I'm, just trying, I'm trying to keep the algorithm on my side. It's less about actually making... <laughs> it's less about actually making, you know, full feature videos for this. It's more about just keeping the algorithm from forgetting about me. All right, come on. Give me the... There we go. Come on. You're killing me, guys. Give it to me. All right, so this will be number three. Then we can look for the uh, bacteria. So, I mean, since we have the time, we might as well try to find it. With the amount of time it would take us to get off this planet, jump to a new system, we already have to be looking for another planet to land on, and, you know, we already found one. So we might as well, uh, might as well just try to maximize our money while we're here. But mostly it's just I'm, I'm try I, I, still have another I still have another video to record after this today so that I, don't have so that I can actually have a weekend. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll fly around for just a second to see if maybe we can find some of the bacteria, the 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 whatever it's called, the blue the blue map thingy. <laughs> I don't know, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, the heat map. The heat map told us that you know they were all kind of intertwined. So we just need to see something that looks like a patch of something. I don't even really know what I'm looking for as far as what the bacterial patch is supposed to be. I didn't really pay attention to what it, which one it was, but even if I did, I don't know the bacteria well enough to identify it visually anyway. Outside of just seeing it on the ground, seeing something bacteria looking on the ground. We'll give it, we'll give it a minute or two, and if we don't see anything, oh, nope, there we go. See, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to bacteria. This is why I don't really focus on it that much. And it's because, you know, a lot of times the bacteria 
is the same color or very close to the same color as the uh, as the ground, so it makes it very difficult to spot it. It either looks like a looks like a little rock on the ground, or you know you don't see it at all. And then also just the fact that uh, the bacteria, th the way that the rendering works in this game, if you're going too fast, what, what the. If you're, if you're going too fast, you'll pass by it before it even renders and you can see it anyway, so... I'm not a fan of driving my SRV around because it takes too long. Ooh, Bacterium Vesicula Red. I don't remember seeing... I, I wish it was actually red, you know what I mean? Like, if it's going to tell me that it's red, you know how much more interesting the bacteria would be if the, if the bacteria itself was actually the color it says it is? Because I've seen some pretty interesting colors associated with the bacteria. But they're all the same. They all they all they're all modeled the same way, which is weird because they went out of their way to make the things like von, the things like Fonticula actually look like they're like the colors say that they're supposed to look. Okay, I don't think it's going to be here in the mountains. Let's uh, try to get into some more flat area here. Let's see if we can find some. We see all these circular spots. They all see, here we go. All these little circular spots in the ground could be it could easily be mistaken for bacteria because you know you're looking for something that's blotchy looking and the bacteria all looks like that. So most of the time I don't I don't really bother, but since since we're so late in the episode and I know I don't really want to go anywhere anyways while there's money to be made here, I decided eh let's just go for it. <coughs> so now I got to think about something to talk about in the next episode because you know I kind of have to. I kind of have to have something to talk about. I don't really know what it's going to be. I've already covered all, all of the major news that I'm aware of when it comes to the game. So i got to kind of think about that for a minute. But right now, we just need to get far enough away from this last bacterial sample to get enough genetic diversity so we can complete the sample and get paid. Okay, that, that's not bacteria, I don't think. Find one. Oh, nope. There we go. There we go. There we go. Nope. Down on the ground, please. Let's go. Alright, here we go. I can get. There we go. Nope. 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 There we go. Alright. Well, hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows that you did and sends the video out to as many people as possible. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your video feed and you will be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click that join button, check out the list of features in addition to that one that are available depending on which tier you choose and decide if any of those are right for you. Your support is greatly appreciated and is a critical step in helping me become a professional YouTuber. So, uh, you know, consider joining the channel. Again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you guys enjoyed this flight, and I will see you for the next one.